PG. Oh, okay, Ben. Uh, do you feel up for talking to Christian in Arizona? I I am. Yeah, I am up for that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Christian is just joining the LGBTQIA community. Uh, what's that been like for you? First of all, uh, huge fan. Can you hear me clearly? Um, yeah. Thanks so much. Okay. Fantastic. Um, yeah. New to the community. Um, I, I identify as bisexual male, but I'm still kind of struggling with that because like in my youth, I suppressed a very strong feminine side mm -hmm. and wow, I, I still can't believe I'm talking to you too. This is amazing. <laughs> Yeah. Is there a little anxiety of, you know what, if I start to scratch on the surface of this, oh no, oops, all trans. Like, is that <laughs> part of the anxiety that you have here? Well, it's terrifying knowing how much real judgment there's, there still is in the world, you know. Sure. Um, I, I remember a time when there was this, this coworker I had a crush on and uh, she did this. <laughs> She did this makeover on me, and I thought I looked particularly hot, and I think she did too, as a matter of fact. But uh, we we paraded around the mall we worked together at, and uh, it, it took inside of like 60 seconds before, before someone threw over my face. And I'm proud of myself. I didn't I didn't react. We we could continued on. We had a peaceful, beautiful night. Um, but anyways, I I've got a lot of religious baggage as well. And I'm trying to work through. Uh, I currently like to call myself an atheist missionary. Uh, <laughs> my objective is to spread truth, the real truth, and nothing but the truth. But uh, I, I'm going to shut up now because I I'd love to hear from you at this point. Yeah, well, Ben, I'm very interested in your experience. I, Christian, I don't mean to take like one small piece of what you said and really stick to it, but I can say for myself, I've always been gender nonconforming to a certain extent. Uh, I didn't have a great vocabulary for these things as a kid. And so when everybody saw me, they just sort of assumed I was gay. And I knew I wasn't gay. So what do I do with that? But everybody knew that there was something off, you know, the boy wasn't right was sort of the thinking. And so as time goes on and trans rights are becoming more discussed and I start learning more about these issues and I start sort of tapping into these more like gender queer aspects of my identity, there is this sort of fear of, oh no, like do I have to go through all of the bigotry and all of the bullshit that people experience? Mm -hmm. And I think that on the outside, people often sort of see these movies where, well, somebody knew when they were four years old that they were had to be gay, that they had to be trans. And that's some people's experiences. There are also some people that have later in life, you know, 70, 80, 90 years old before they finally realize or are able to come out to themselves and acknowledge these things. But I, I also have people coming up to me on a semi-regular basis going like, so when are you really going to come out? Like, when are you actually going to admit that you're just trans? And it's tricky because even though I've done all of the soul searching and I'm happy and satisfied with the me that I've discovered, you never really know. You know, and it, you start pulling on these threads. Who knows? Maybe I will be one of those, you know, later in life trans folks. I don't think so. But it's uncomfortable being in that position. Uh, ben, what was your experience like in trying to figure out some of these questions for yourself? Oh, man, I, I've got some experiences that, that might resonate with a lot of people here. Um, because I'm from a very fundamentalist evangelical family. I had never, I mean, I had heard kind of about what the gays were. And <laughs> I didn't really know about the trans people until even later on because i was so uh isolated from a lot of that um but for me uh it it took really going to college to even be exposed to the community at all but it was kind of the this terrifying thing of coming out to myself first as uh gay which like now i identify more as bisexual which it's kind of interesting because that only happened after i started testosterone which is a whole separate conversation but like the first, the first time, like coming out to myself as gay, like it was so hard even to, to say the word, it was uncomfortable to even think that that word could apply to me. Cause I knew the baggage that came with it. I knew what, what my family would do. I knew what my community would do. 
and I didn't want I didn't want it to be true. Uh, so I it took me a while to process like, what does this mean for me? Um, and it's hard. It's hard to to think through that to say I might I might How messed be gay. Up is that? And I think the and I think the first yeah. time I ever said it aloud to another person, I cried. Like, and it was so hard for me to even get the words out because I did not. Like it's that that feeling of once you verbalize it, now it's real. Um, and, and I think that hit me like the first couple times I came out to people, it was that terrifying. And then as I learned more about myself, I became very happy being in the queer community. I love, I love, I mean, queer culture is kind of like it's its own subculture of uh of our society. And I love it. I love being part of this. And I, I gotten comfortable with being gay um but i start questioning like my own gender and my at first it, it was my gender expression i was like you know i've always presented more masculine like i've always liked uh more gender neutral clothes and things i i would cry a, a, anytime i was forced to wear something feminine and and so i finally learned about gender identity and what that is and it was really scary for me to go through that process because I knew what people were doing to trans people. And the whole thought process was uh, like, that can't be me. I can't be trans. Like I cannot mm -hmm. be the person that's targeted like this, that like, how cruel is it that I could have to go through this existence? Um, so I just tried not to be, I tried not to be trans. I was like, no, I'm, I can't be trans. Uh, and eventually i started warming up more to like but but what if that is true like what if i would get joy out of being this person that i've been so afraid to be and it's it's not easy at all to come to terms with that and i'm not ever going to say that it is but uh i had a therapist who was helpful for me in this because i could talk to them confidentially and say here's what i'm processing i don't know what to do with this information and to have them walk through with me, like, what does this mean for my life? Uh, and figure out that it really wasn't that big of a deal. And uh, I mean, the fear was still there, but like, I was still going to be me at the end of the day. Like, mm -hmm. I've always been this me. It's just learning more about who this person is that I just haven't thought thought much about in depth. So, I mean, I would definitely recommend, I'm sure Christy is also going to recommend uh, a good counselor or therapist that can that you can process this with uh because it's it's amazing to be able to say this to yourself and uh and to feel comfortable about it and and you can always like something too with the therapist uh as you can say these words mm -hmm. to them and like let's say you start experimenting with uh with identifying a certain way and then you dial back and say you know what i actually don't think that that was the right label for me i don't know if i feel that way and they can help walk you through okay yeah that's fine we'll we'll look at something else or or whatever and i think i think therapists are incredibly valuable uh and that might be a good route to go down yeah i mean leaving gender and everything else out of it one of the best ways to know sort of who you are uh is to find out a little bit more about who you are not you know, putting on clothes that don't fit you quite right really serves to highlight the clothes that do fit you. And so just being willing to be curious to, to try on these identities and to play around, you don't have to stick with anything, but you'll, you won't, I'm not going to say you'll know, you know, again, there is no magic like unlock sound that lets you know that you have hit the right <laughs> achievement or that you're in the right outfit. But at the same time, to the extent that any of us ever do, you'll start to feel that sensation of, you know what, this is me, or this is me today, or you know what, even just, I'm feeling it today. And that's enough. That's all any of us can really hope for. And and what kind of one last oh, truth, thing. Truth be told. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to just, just go ahead, please. One last thing that I, I wanted to bring up is, is the fact that you might never feel like you are uh, the right type of person to have a certain label. And that happens to all of us. The imposter syndrome is there. Like I still have times where I'm like, am I really trans? And like, I look at my life, like, no, I absolutely am trans. And like, but I think all of us have those questions and thoughts and it's okay. It's okay to keep having that. Like, you, like Christy was saying, you, you probably will never have a moment of like, ding, everything lines up perfectly. Cause it probably won't. 
Uh, but know that whatever decisions you make for yourself are probably, as long as you're not hurting yourself or other people, they're probably an okay decision. And you probably don't need to uh, worry about, am I trans enough? Am I gay enough? Because whatever uh, makes you happy to, if you want to have a label like that, go for it. If you don't want a label like that, that's also totally fine. But mm -hmm. uh, you don't have hmm. to know 100%. Well, said. well, I know we kind of got far afield and, and covered a lot of ground, Christian, but how is that lining up with what you're looking for? Uh, what is it maybe that we haven't touched on or that feels important to talk about before we start to wrap up for the day? Well, first of all, you're really good at what you do. Um, well, second thank of you. all, um, I don't care what anybody says. You're both beautiful to me and you have... Uh, very impressive hairlines. Mine's receding, unfortunately. But uh, no, <laughs> regarding being my true self, um, I you know now that I'm not uh, under the thumb of social oppression, I can be honest with myself. First time in a long time, and look back and understand those you know through a new lens. Um, I know what I like to wear. I know that I'm attracted to a spectrum of people. Um, yeah. Beyond that, like pronouns, I'd really, I could really care less. I love everybody, you know? Um, yeah. Well, I, I hear it. I mean, I'm just glad to know that you are feeling like you're finding your feet and finding your place and you'll never get there. You know, uh, arriving isn't a thing that we ever actually do. It's a uh, aspiration, not a destination. But I'm so glad to hear that you are on your journey and that you're having a good time with it. So thank you so much for uh, calling and sharing all of that with us today. And uh, we hope to hear from you in the future. One day that you know, uh -huh. same level of bravery that, that you both have because... It's a it's a work in progress, you know, and uh, this legislation us at this moment. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that's all fair to say. You know, I, mean, I, just, I I don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, we're, we're kind of losing the connection with you, Christian, but it is worth acknowledging that it's not, quote, like, hard to be trans. I hope that's okay for me to say, SDB. Mm -hmm. It is hard to be trans or gender nonconforming in a world that is mm -hmm. so dedicated to making that difficult. And we are seeing so much of that right now. So the anxiety that people may be experiencing around their gender identity that they then attribute to their gender identity is better attributed to the, the kind of bullshit world that we are living in right now. And some of the things that hopefully you and I and all of the great volunteers here are working to do something about. Absolutely, I will co-sign all that. And just like to reiterate, like labels only really matter to express your experience to other people. So, mm -hmm. and if you want to wear a label, that is okay. Uh, you can choose to to tell somebody that you identify a certain way or that you fit a certain a certain label. But if you don't want to use a label at all and you just say this is me, that's totally fine. Like you are not obligated to take any label. Um, it's just a way to communicate your experience to other people. Mm -hmm. So. Labels are like underwear. You know, they make it uh, a little bit more comfortable to fit in sometimes, but you definitely don't need them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. <laughs> yeah.